The following podcast may contain some adult language. You've been warned. Those of you who got an invite, welcome to Nerd Prom. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all Nerds International with the hyphen. Welcome to Finding the Narrative, a Genesis RPG podcast. This is a show dedicated to the Genesis role-playing system from Fantasy Flight Games, a show in which we, your hosts, discuss all things Genesis from both a player's and a GM's perspective. I am Tony Fanning, and with me, with me as always, is my good friend and co-host, Chris Holmes. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing great. I am doing great. Finally, springtime here up in Minnesota. No yeah. snow. <laughs> I know the last time we probably recorded, we were I was still shoveling, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, what was that, two weeks ago? Jeez. A few weeks ago, yeah. Went out yeah, golfing been... over the weekend. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've been out doing all of our yard work. Yeah. Ugh, nightmares. <laughs> yep, and I got the little puppy on Friday. She was oh, born sweet. the same day Odin was there, so... Nice. We'll have yeah. to introduce my little appetizer to Odin someday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that'd be a good idea. No, probably Odin's not. Odin's going to shape up. He's shaping up to be a big monster. You know, I feel a advantageous threats coming on someday <laughs> <laughs> with that. Anyways, <laughs> um, let's see here. You know, you have in the show notes here news. I have no news. We've, yeah. You know, very um, FFG's been fairly quiet. It's been very us? dry, like a drought. Like they're hiding something from us. Who knows? Oh. Who knows? I'm hoping they'll surprise us with something that's coming out sooner than we thought. Yeah, that would be good. That would be good. Yeah. And I don't think any other. I mean, the only other news is, you know, Han Solo's movie's coming out next week. <laughs> I got I'm my ex- tickets ex- already. Did you? Oh, sweet. Sweet. Opening night, 7 p.m. <laughs> very good. Very good. All right, so let's get into some le- listener feedback, man. Who do we have? Who do we have up first? All right, first of all, we got an email from uh, Luke Olson, also known as Sky Jedi, over on the uh, FFG forums. Oh yeah, it says, "Hey guys, love the show. I wanted to share with you guys a bunch of resources I've made slash compiled, and I got to tell you." This is a long list. <laughs> We're we'll going to put in these the show in the notes. Definitely. We'll put these in the show notes. Yep. I just want to say a shout out to Sky Jedi. You're doing a wonderful job. Oh, heck yeah. Um, the, uh, everything that I've seen on there is working like a charm. Oh, yeah. Um, loving that, much, loving that master, I'm, I'm loving that master resources list that you have pinned at the top of the, uh, uh, top of the forum there. Well done. Um, other thing is I have tried your die roller. Out on Genesis, um, the the Discord server there, um, very sweet, very sweet. And I was just playing around with your character creator, and being a um, a web uh, designer and programmer myself, very slick dude, very slick. I have one suggestion. Oh, by the way, he's got all the archetypes from um, the core book and Tiernoth. Also, all the careers, which, by the way, you pick your career, you pick your skills, and you go down a little bit, and he also checks off the careers for you, um, puts the little die symbols in there, very slick. The one suggestion, if you wanted to, no big deal, is adding a career, the Rune Master, which is effectively just a mage, but instead of the Arcane skill, it's the Rune skill. So, just a suggestion. Other than that, dude, it looks slick. Very slick. You can log okay. in with like a Google Plus account. You can import, export stuff. So, very nice. Very well done. Okay. Again, we'll have all those links and stuff in the show notes for you, for everybody too. Right. All right. And uh, the second one I have here is from uh, we we just know him as Will. Um, Will <laughs> he or give Eric. us a last name. Uh, Will. Okay. Uh, and uh, Will has uh, Eric was the, the third one. 
Um, oh, Eric was the third yeah, one. Gotcha. Uh, he had a rather long email uh, and a, one that perplexed me. So I'm going to let Chris handle it. Um, <laughs> so it's uh, I have some ideas, but it kind of depends on where in this. Uh, oh, wait, that's your response. That's I'm my reading. response. <laughs> Let's read Will, what Will said. <laughs> you want me to read it? I'll do it. Go ahead, dude. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm ass backwards today. <laughs> All right. So Will. Um, Will here, been a GM for a few years now and recently fell in love with Genesis's narrative dice system. I played on many points of the player power spectrum except probably the highest one, God level. For my next campaign, I want PCs to unwillingly unleash all of mythology upon the modern world and have to become gods to sort out all the divine chaos that is ruining the world. How would you guys deal with the power of that magnitude in the Genesis system? And do you have any advice on how to handle creating and running religions that players start? Because why be a god if you can't have people worship you? Best of luck to you all. Yes. Um, <laughs> it so, perplexed Tony. And it, <laughs> because I, I have no desire to play on that end of the spectrum at yeah. all. Well, I've done, the, I've done the whole... This is years ago now. This is probably 30 years ago. Created that created that dwarf character who killed Thor and then killed <laughs> Zeus and all that other stuff, right? When you're rolling all those 18s, of course, mm-hmm. right? So we've done that, but that's not my suggestion. So what I was thinking of, when, when you mentioned this, I was thinking it kind of depends on where you want to start. And you did mention, Will, that they have to become gods. So I was thinking that maybe it's a party of demigods that are started. There may be children of gods that have that you know half mortal, half immortal, um, and they just have the inherent knowledge of that. Dare I say, domain or sphere of influence for a um, for a religion. Now I did notice that you did mention a kind of a modern setting, but my I think my answer can kind of apply here, anyways. Um, do all the maybe not all those characters know that they've come from gods? Maybe some have, but I think one of the most important things here is you'll maybe you'll want to have your bad guys. But hey, what other thing? What other better bad guy is brothers and sisters maybe that are evil that have come from other evil gods that have that are demigods too? Um, as far as mechanics goes, you know I heard somebody who created thousand earned experience points characters. And mm-hmm. ran them through stuff, and that seems to be maybe a good starting point. I did put five hundred, but you know, I'm thinking maybe a thousand. I'm thinking of Darth Vader, how they statted <laughs> up Darth Vader in what is it, Dawn of Rebellion? Mm-hmm. That's a thousand XP. Come on, oh, That's, easily. I mean, a well, six force rating. I mean, you're, we're pushing it, and he's basically the most powerful person in the galaxy, or was, right? Um, so it's those. So that's maybe some place to start. Another thing, mechanics-wise, you know, remove the cap on your characteristics for brawn, agility, all of those, and even the skill ranks. I think skill ranks. I think they cap at five as well. Just remove it. Now, well, what about like a special like, um, I, and you know, one thing that was uh, I, that did come to mind for me. The one little thing is that mm-hmm. the whole superhero setting. You know, because a lot of superhero genres have uh, demigods in yep. them. Yep. Um, so, also inco- incorporate the the superhero setting rules from the Genesis core book. There you go. Yep. Those are yep. Those are in the back of the core book. There. Um, I would I would even remove the limit on the number of times you can take the dedication talent. Typically, you can only take the dedication talent once per gear, per given characteristic. <laughs> Throw that out there because you know, hey, they're gods, and you can always do the whole technology is magic thing, kind of like you know Thor and Asgard and all that kind of stuff too. Um, but I don't know. I was just kind of rambling um, in my e- my response, which I'm going to be sending off to you here, Will, in a little bit. Um, but you know, you could definitely mimic god powers using the ma- the magic system. Exactly, and not just divine, but you can do arcane and primal too. Um, but, anyways, I mean that's kind of my feedback there, and um, have fun with it. I'd love to play in it. <laughs> it sounds like fun, man. <laughs> I wouldn't. So that, that would be that would sound kind of <laughs> cool. And you know, you got to make sure. You know, I got big hands, 
and I can ca- I can put a lot of dice in them, and your car- your players better have big hands because, dude, you're going to be there's going to be some big dice pools. Uh, if you got, got use like Yahtzee a- cups. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Or huge solo cups. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. So all hey, right. be looking for my email, my response back to you there, Will. So, all right. All right, and uh, next one our, uh, that I'm going to read here is from Eric, uh, Shy Guy 1080 Farrar. I hope I don't butcher your last name, but if I did, um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Ferrier? I don't know. It looks like Farrar to me. Farrar, anyway. yeah. Farrar. Um, yeah, and I'm assuming Shy Guy 1080 would be his uh, FFG forum name because I've seen that one on there, I think. Yeah, okay. This is – uh, Eric, uh, my name's Eric. I started listening to your podcast about a week ago. I picked up Genesis about a month ago, and the first tabletop RPG I've looked to play since D Shift Seven D Three Point Five E. Hey, he has been listening. <laughs> 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 and I do love the way the GM can really take control of the system and the story, which is why uh, we play this stuff. Mm. I myself am writing a Fallout story that I want to tell that spans my hometown and surrounding area of Chicago um, and a little Milwaukee. I, uh, I am having difficulty getting players together since no one wants to be as nerdy as I am. I was curious as to how to get random pickup games online and how to how it works and how would I do it as a GM once my game is ready. Also, I like how you guys break down the system and or how the break the system down makes it easier to put together and it helps me understand how it more and well as motivate my as well as motivate my drive to work. Dude um, first of all, I can't read, but um, and it's, have, it also have another says, drink, Tony. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, I'm still freaking hungover from last night's concert. Okay, um, awesome. Uh, and and he says, keep it up at the end there. First of all, Eric, I've I've already responded to his email, but um, cool. I brought it up uh, that uh, there was a, a member of uh, another uh, podcast community that created a Fallout um, document. Uh, mm-hmm. And it, it's a really comprehensive document. In fact, it's one of the. It's his idea to do that is the impetus for one of the impetuses for why they actually um, decided to do Genesis because it worked well. Um, and that's uh, GM Phil over at the uh, the Order sixty six podcast. Yep. And he he wrote that all up. It's a free resource online. I recommend you go download it. I've yep. downloaded it. It's 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 beautiful. You can go to Sky Jedi's master resource list and find it. Which and we'll have in the show notes. <laughs> and also there on Sky Jedi's master resource list is his uh, listed Genesis Discord server. It is dedicated to Genesis, yep. and you will find people who are looking for games all the time on there. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so I, that's my recommendation. Uh, if you're looking for players, once you've got this done, mm-hmm. go on there say, hey, I need players to play test my Fallout. Yep. And you'll probably find three or four now they won't be locals they won't come sit at the table with you but um right. i at least you'll have people and you can use their uh their dice roller right there on the discord app um right. and and it works well and you know what hey why don't you come check out the nerds international community on g plus because we're a bunch of dorks that nerds that want that pretty much we we play online all the time i'm playing thursday night in a deadlands uh genesis sized thing too so you know yep we're a great community and over there also in the fall uh we have uh our coming again in the fall we haven't picked a date yet but we will have uh nerds international nerds international virtual con uh, mm-hmm. we'll be having another one of those and uh when you see that uh, when we talk about it here on the show i'm sure we will uh, yeah. go to that website go to the link that we send you know we put in our show notes and sign up to run a game or sign up to play games, uh, you'll get players. Cool. Um, and since you're like, since Eric, you're in sh- the Chicago area, pretty sure Richfield, Ohio, is within what, driving distance. We're gonna be mm-hmm. at Con, we're gonna be at Con on the Cob this year, November eighth through the eleventh, um, in and- Richfield, Ohio. That's just south of Cleveland, I think. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's going to be a couple Genesis games run there, including one run by Chris and myself at the same time. We're co-GMing it. We are co-GMing it, and the, I'm looking forward to that, dude. It is top secret right now what we're going to be running. Super top secret. <laughs> but it will be Genesis. <laughs> also known as not written. <laughs> hey, we brainstormed. <laughs> I'm getting <All> right. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Well, all right, that's thanks, Eric. Cool. Yeah, thank yeah, yeah, thank thank all of you guys. And um, for those of you who haven't heard your emails um, read on here, we're you know we kind of keep keep a couple of them you know off to the side that will um, that we'd like to showcase in a in um, a future shows that are you know relevant. I know we had done a combat one when we did, read Jamie's held Jamie's um, until we did the combat shows and stuff like that. So we've got. Other shows coming up, talents. We have all kinds. <laughs> yeah, hey, so if you if, could give if, us ideas for shows too, feel free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. feel free. Uh, <laughs> someone actually did, and 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 again, I'm not going to mention um, his email now because we're going to talk about that or his message when we when we get to that show. Perfect. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, we actually do. I, I know I alluded last show that we we don't get a lot of uh, uh, um, mail. Um, they oh. they they've risen to the challenge. Yes, please. <laughs> They're sending me more than I can respond to in one show. <laughs> yes, and I have to check the email more often <laughs> than I do. Mm-hmm. All right. So excellent. Uh, so yes, I believe um, it is time for me since I forgot what the name of our show is. Oh, I we remember. Are, we're going to get you. We're going to get all up in your grill. Going to be talking about the vehicle combat and all things vehicle related tonight. Yeah. All right. All right. Here we are going to the book of Genesis now. All right. We are going to be talking vehicle rules and combat overview, which starts on page 220 in your good book of Genesis there. So yep. let's start by saying vehicle combat is kind of fun, and we're going to go over some of the basics here for you. Let's start with the um, vehicle characteristics, Tony. What do we have there, bud? Uh, sure. Uh, okay, so in the book here it goes through, but uh, you've got um, handling, mm-hmm. um, which is the measure of a vehicle's agility and how well it responds to a pilot. Yep. Um, and that the- number, that number... A positive number, you'll be adding that many boost dice to your mm-hmm. piloting checks. Negative numbers, you'll be adding that many setback die to your piloting checks. Right on. Mm-hmm. And then uh, also is the vehicle's uh, speed, mm-hmm. which is its maximum speed. Uh, and that's a, it's not in miles per hour. It's not in kilometers per hour. Um, it's in ratings of, I don't know, I've seen five or six as the maximum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much, um, it's uh, it's narrative in mm-hmm. speed. You a little know, more abstract. Rating. Yes, um, and it's why because it needs to be compared to other vehicles and nothing else. It doesn't need to be compared yeah. to law laws of physics. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it puts it, it gives you. A, I mean, if a, if a vehicle has a top speed of three and another one has a top speed of five, that kind of gives you the gives you all you need right there. One's faster yeah. than the other, and almost twice as fast. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and then uh, silhouette, uh, which is the an abstract of the vehicle's size. And so that goes from silhouette. Uh, it's, well, all creatures even have a silhouette, uh, yep. with small creatures, tiny ones, uh, having a silhouette of zero. Mm-hmm. Man-sized uh, people and objects having a silhouette of one, all the way up to a silhouette of, what is the biggest one you've seen yet now? Nine, 13? Uh, I've, seen, I've seen <laughs> 10 for the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or was it twenty? I can't remember nah, yeah, what it I was. I don't remember. But and I'm yeah, not bothering to look it up. And there, <laughs> and it, and it is, and it is more of a exponential increase, mm-hmm. you know. And it's not only like the length width; it's just the whole bulk in it's size entire of mass. it. Yeah, it's like a, it's an abstract. Here's how big the thing is, kind of thing. So, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, and then uh, next you have uh, armor. Oh, sorry. Defense. Mm-hmm. Defense is uh, 
defense is a vehicle's first line of defense against attacks um, and accidents, uh, typically representative of a starship's ray shields or um, an armor, uh, what is it, armor plating. Yeah, yeah, defense uh, represents any factors, technological or otherwise, that prevent damage uh, from harming the vehicle. And that is... uh, And they're typically in zones. Like, you may have a defense, like your forward defense, or your, and then your, your um, aft defense, or maybe if on bigger, on larger silhouette, things like maybe silhouette four or higher, you would have four zones, the front, back, um, port, and starboard um, as well, left and right mm-hmm. um, sides as well. And, you know, that's kind of what those are used for. And what those do it. is they uh, add setback dice to uh, people trying to hit you. Yep, just so. like in the personal scale, if you if you're behind cover, you have a gives you a melee or a range defense. It's that many setback die that you're adding. Right, okay. and then next we have armor, mm-hmm. which is a measure of a vehicle's uh, armor armor plating. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's what a vehicle uses to soak. Yep, and then vehicles just kind of like uh, be, uh, beings and characters have hull trauma which is their wounds and a system strain which is their strain threshold yep yep and talking about those two um and just like in the personal scale combat where you can only repair sorry do medicine do a medicine check on yourself once or somebody else wants to heal wounds um same thing here you can only spend a hard uh, a hard repair check to repair once per encounter and then beyond that you'll have to find materials and such like that and there's some guidance in here for that as well yep and something right. that i did not realize until i read this the other day was <laughs> in system strain you cannot spend advantage to heal your system strain. So if everybody, if you remember, you know, in personal combat, if you're taking strain, you could spend one advantage to heal back that strain. But in this, you cannot do that for a vehicle because there are specific maneuvers and combat actions that you can do to heal that, to heal and fix that system strain that we'll get into as we go. Yep. So yeah, there's a couple of couple of pretty good tables here on page 221. There's a handling examples um, that gives you like a you know a handling of zero would be just a regular car, a jetpack, motorboat. Um, a fancy car or a fighter jet would have a handling of plus two, which would give them you know two boost die. Or you have like an aircraft carrier. If you're behind the steering wheel of an aircraft carrier, you'll have to <laughs> add three setback dice <laughs> if you wanted to make piloting checks for that. Well, yeah. Or Those drivers. things are hard to turn. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And then the other one there is vehicle speeds in certain encounter, in structured encounters where, um, you know, you have a speed of one to two. You can move two range bands. Speed three to four, you can move three range bands, but you have to upgrade your difficulty checks and critical hits suffered or more. Your critical hits are in collisions are more severe, and then f- a speed of five, you can move four range bands and such. And so it's pretty, uh, pretty cool stuff. They you know laid out pretty good in here for that. Yeah, yeah, and and those charts, uh, those are very handy. Keep those handy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because if you ever do vehicle combat, um, they're yeah. gonna you're gonna use them a lot. The other um, thing is on that same page, that sidebar, the vehicle components. That was an interesting one as well. Yeah, I didn't read that one. Go ahead and um, yeah, expand. So, so they go into like the brakes. Like if the brakes are compromised, um, well, you won't be able to stop. <laughs> you won't be able to use the decelerate maneuver. And again, we'll get into some of the actions and such that you can do. If the defenses are compromised, then of course your defense is going to be zero. If your hull is compromised, get this, your armor becomes zero. Mm. Ouch. When, when navigation is camp- compromised, your handling becomes minus three. Unless mm. it's already lower, then you're totally hosed. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, if your propulsion is compromised, you can't accelerate. Um, weapons, you won't be able to use your weapons. And then um, repairing these components is a mechanics check. can range anywhere from average, hard, um, maybe even more difficult than that, 
at the I love that at you the GM's discretion add some red in there <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah and and that's if you're I mean damage components happen during uh, uh, generally from critical hits uh, yeah. they can also happen though during collisions mm-hmm. um, so l- let's uh, yeah let's talk about collisions sure. on page 222 um, oh yeah so when uh, two vehicles collide or when a vehicle collides with a, uh, uh, a, a an inanimate object <laughs> or, or an animate object, <laughs> um, in the case of a, a minor collision, uh, all vehicles involved suffer a single critical hit. Simple as that. Um, the uh, Subtract the vehicle's uh, defense times 10 from the result rolled. On the critical hit. So, when you're rolling yep. that, that 100 side, so, yeah, the 100... So you've got uh, shields on your uh, port side, and you collide with another carrier. Uh, um, you've got two, a rating of two there. You're gonna you're gonna subtract twenty percent from the critical hit that you roll. Yep. And that's a minor collision. That's uh, two uh, two vehicles bumping into each other at relatively uh, low rates of speed, uh, glancing mm-hmm. blows kind of thing. Yep. Um, and that's also if you're you know you sideswipe a, a, a telephone pole. At, at a low rate of speed, yep, or uh, so on and so forth. <laughs> um, then there's uh, major collisions. <laughs> <laughs> Those are always fun. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. All vehicles involved suffer a critical hit, <laughs> and you subtract the vehicle's defense times five instead of times ten, right, from the result. So uh, you know you're going to ignore non- odd numbers pretty much, right. um, and then at your discretion, GMs. Uh, that's one thing we love, GM's discretion. Oh, yeah. Uh, some particularly large vehicles uh, might be able to ignore these collisions when hit, hitting smaller vehicles. Mm-hmm. Um, but when those smaller vehicles hit you, darn right, it's going to be probably a major a major collision for sure. Mm-hmm. So yep. that's another way to get uh, critical hits and get damage components. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't do any damage to the hull trauma of the vehicles normally right um normally it's just a a crit of some Mm -hmm. kind and then um one other thing to note there is when you are reducing that roll result on the critical hit table when you're rolling that percentile die if it happens to um nullify it entirely like reduces your roll below zero then the mm-hmm. critical hit is like canceled, and then if something like that happens, I would, I would, you know, that's a good time for for something narrative, you know, mm-hmm. something to happen. It's a good, a good time to just throw something in there, you know. Sure, sure. Good call, buddy. Yeah, man. All right. Um, so, uh, moving on. Okay. So, what do we have next, man? Oh well, there's uh, descriptions of what uh, hull trauma and, and strain threshold are, and how they're handled. And of course, you know when your hull trauma hits zero, um, your vehicle is no more. Um, mm-hmm. it's, well, it's it's one of those things where it can be. It doesn't necessarily explode, though it could if you want to do that. But it does mention in here that like minor, you know, like NPCs. You know, minion NPCs or something like that. Yeah, that Tie Fighter. You know, they'll just explode or something like that. But if you know you got a rival or a nemesis PC, maybe it's just or an NPC. Maybe they're just disabled out there and they're venting in the atmosphere, or you know they have to land, or if they're if it's a vehicle, they're just you know they wrap themselves around a telephone pole and it's just they can't move or something. You know what I mean? Yep. No, I've I've run um, Starfighter combat in uh, Star Wars yeah. multiple yeah. times, and um, I just uh, if if it's players mm-hmm. piloting or N, or N, uh, Nemesis NPCs, uh, the vehicle is disabled uh, yeah. and and floating dead in space. Uh, in in the case of a, um, a, a, a minion, it goes boom because explosions are cool, mm-hmm. <laughs> and Tie Fighters always blow up. Yeah, they do. Uh, <laughs> exactly. You never, other than Darth Vader's, you don't ever see one not blow up. <laughs> yeah, he just gets spun out in the space. <laughs> well, I take that back. They made a episode uh, seven where mm-hmm. Tie Fighter, but again, players were flying it. 
So <laughs> suddenly <laughs> that one go. doesn't blow up when it's hit one time. But anyhow. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, and then there's a little note here, which I, I, I wanted to bring up because uh, uh, it came up in um, uh, one of my previous games recently. And mm-hmm. that is the um, uh, Hull Trauma threshold is measured on a planetary scale planetary scale versus personal scale yes. and yes so when we get into vehicle grade weapons personal scale planetary scale mm-hmm. i'll touch base on it more but it says here right in this little note please note that uh whole trauma threshold is measured in planetary scale versus personal scale meaning that one point of hull trauma equals 10 wounds to an right. individual right from a from so, a uh, yeah from a pl- yeah from a personal scale if you're shooting your pistol at a fighter jet yeah you know it's gonna be great but you might not do <laughs> enough damage to it I'd take a real lucky shot <laughs> mm-hmm. it's gonna be doing it's yeah it's a, it's a it's a 10 to 1 ratio as far as damage goes for that <clears throat> and mm-hmm. that means soak the armor and soak as well. So personal soak of a three will soak, you know, three points of damage. But a per, uh, armor of three will soak thirty points of personal scale damage and three mm-hmm. points of you know vehicle scale. Right. And if a planetary scale weapon hits a, a, a person, yeah, pink. <laughs> Pink mist. Well, and if you don't want to rule that, you can, mm-hmm. you know, say that they were on the edge of the blast or they were, you know, yep. winged by the hit. Either way, though, <laughs> uh, it's it's ten times. Yeah. So if your vehicle weapon hits a person for three points of damage, it's doing thirty. Yeah, it's like they're not having a, ve- a good, very good day. Let's yeah. just say that. <laughs> I don't know any characters with 30 wounds. So it, it, one no. hit, one point of damage, mm-hmm. two points of damage is usually enough to take out most people. Though I'm pretty sure one of those gods I'm going to make in um, Will's <laughs> campaign will have 30 wounds. <laughs> if I have 1,000 XP to play with. You know, seven ranks of toughness. Yeah, I'll have toughness. <laughs> <laughs> toughness 10. What? Yeah, man, that's 20 hit points, or 20, 20 wounds. Yeah, 20 additional wounds. 20 additional. That's beyond character creation ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, now we're back into attrition systems. No, thank you. All right. <laughs> so I think, um, I think and- Jamie's probably going into convul- having a convulsion right there. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, uh, so uh, in, uh, on page uh, 223, uh, mm-hmm. we talk about uh, vehicle. They talk about the two different types of protection, which we did, and vehicle weapons. Vehicle weapons have ranges yeah. just like uh, personal brand weapons, except for they're on a planetary scale. Um, so mm-hmm. uh, they have ranges uh, that are. Uh, do they call it close? I, I can't remember if we call it close now. I the... think it's. I can't remember what they said. They changed. They they they've simplified it a little bit. Here in the Genesis system, um, yeah. where um, yeah, everything's <laughs> basically on the same scale, but mm-hmm. they've added another another range band. To it. Uh, yeah. Kind okay. So it is an engaged range, and mm-hmm. then you have um, uh, short range, medium range, long range, and then extreme range, and then the new one, mm-hmm. which is strategic range. Yes, and then uh, damage for uh, vehicle weapons is just like uh, pers- uh, personal scale weapons in that uh, they have a rating listed, and uh, they deal that damage plus one for every uncancelled success. Yep. yep. And they have critical ratings that work the same way also, which is number mm-hmm. of advantage needed to activate a critical hit yep. with that particular weapon. And then they have something that personal grade weapons don't normally have. Yep. Um, I mean, besides their special qualities, those are uh, di- slightly different uh, with breach and a couple that you only see on uh, planetary scale weapons. Mm-hmm. But they have this firing arc. Yep. Uh, firing arc is the direction or directions a weapon can be fired based on where it is mounted on the vehicle. Mm-hmm. So if it's turret mounted and where the turrets are at, it's going to cover a zone. Um, whether that's uh, if it's top-mounted turret, it's going to go all around. 
if it's a side mounted turret it might only go you know front and back and up and down um right yep but, yep uh, and i would i would actually um when i'm when i'm thinking of firing arcs i think of defense zones as well you know how we were saying you know there's a front a back and then there could be a left and a right mm-hmm. and i would kind of put your firing arcs in there as well you know if you have a smaller ship you can do front or rear facing if you have a little larger ship you can do the turret mounted as you you know as you said tony that it can go and hit all our firing arcs around or you can mm-hmm. go into the front or maybe a side arc and i would even allow if you do have a a turret or a or a um a gun in your say your port or your left side firing arc you know, you could fire in that arc. I might even let them fire into the into the front arc if they're on that same side. If they're on that side, you know, like maybe just out of it with like maybe throw a setback die in there or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. Something along sure. Those if they're lines. on the edge of your firing arc, that's sure. a good place for that's mm-hmm. a good place for upgraded shots. That's a good place for um, for extra setback dice narratively. Yep. Um, and, and where there's and, also- and where there's setback dice and where there are. are um, upgraded um difficulties there are also talents <laughs> that you could create to mitigate that stuff too sure sure yeah and and we're talking about um for like space combat and for uh dog fighting in in the air um mm-hmm. I mean, you also have of- to worry about those uh those uh third dimension top and bottom mm-hmm. um axes uh, uh uh for your um mountings yep. i am thinking of a of a western can't remember which one it was um that i saw where there was a stagecoach it was one of those um it was an, basically quote unquote an armored car and there were some guys on the inside that were looking out the side guy looking out the other side and there was like this tail gunner basically that had one of those old time you know like rotary guns that were just blowing all the people away it's called a gatlin gun oh, dude. gatlin gun <gasps> you know what it was in <laughs> Wild Wild West? No, Firefly. <laughs> <laughs> it was in a Firefly episode. Remember well, that's when not they a were... Western. That's a space Western. <laughs> Dude, but it played out like a Western, that, that, whole, that whole episode. Oh, crap, that was Firefly. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, Whatever. man. But it's the same thing. <laughs> uh, Only different. That's good. <laughs> All right, uh, so that pretty much covers your vehicle vehicle characteristics. And again, mm-hmm. we talked we talked about uh, personal scale, planetary scale. Yep. There is on page two twenty five uh, the the differences. It explains um, what those do, and also it, there's an item quality listed there for vehicle weapons. If you want to have um, a small personal scale weapon. Uh, that would defend at a personal scale on a vehicle that is mounted, Mm -hmm. just give it the personal scale quality. Yep, exactly. So, for instance... um, Like 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 an M50 on top, or an M60 or whatever, mounted on top of a M1 tank. Or... Or Back to Star Wars because it's my favorite thing ever. Oh. Uh, those, those little pop-out blasters on the bottom of the Millennium Falcon that showed up when the yep. stormtroopers were shooting. Absolutely. Um, personal scale blasters. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, yep. yeah. All right. Very so cool. So that pretty much covers those. Yep. Now we get into vehicle combat. Vehicle combat, yeah. Um, yeah, dude. <laughs> this is... Uh, and I think everybody's going to be... F- fairly impressed with how um fantasy flight has done this because it's pretty similar to you know personal combat you know you have your actions and maneuvers and you have incidental actions incidental things that you can do as well um the one thing you want we will want to take a note of is that in the list in here which isn't necessarily a comprehensive list um and if you come up with your own maneuvers and actions i would say feel free to add them to this list but they're also pilot only maneuvers and actions Mm -hmm. so only the pilot can accelerate the vehicle or um turn the vehicle or whatever yeah accelerate or decelerate unless Um, we're getting out and pushing Unless we're getting out and pushing, <laughs> which I had to do a couple months ago over at my buddy Dan's house. His wife even came out and helped us push, too, when it was snowing. <laughs> Didn't yeah. have a whole lot of acceleration there, but... 
But and, uh, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, and to make an and that I was actually looking at that sidebar on page two twenty six with mm-hmm. the pilot only maneuvers and actions. Um, so in the second paragraph there, it says um, when you're making a pilot only maneuver and you want to make another maneuver to suffer system strain the if you want to do two maneuvers without say spending downgrading an action to a maneuver the the um the vehicle will take system strain and the pilot will take personal tr- strain will suffer will suffer two strain as well now that's something i've missed over the years i never noticed that yep yep both of them do but if you have a co-pilot mm-hmm. the co-pilot does not suffer that the um the strain the the vehicle certainly still does but the second pilot does not suffer strain so for there is a reason for having a co-pilot yes one pilot can make one maneuver the other pilot can make the second maneuver the the vehicle still takes system strain it's just the pilots don't so food for thought food for thought there all right so uh again um it so combat is a lot like the personal scale combat rules. Mm -hmm. The vehicle combat rules, you start, you roll initiative. Uh, What skill do we use to roll initiative? The same ones. Exactly. (laughs) Cool (laughs) for when you are uh, setting up an ambush or uh, you, you, or uh, yeah, basically when you are setting up an ambush and Mm -hmm. vigilance when you're surprised, whether it's both parties surprising each other or one party is surprised by the other. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, and they have here, um, we have different kinds of combats, like there's small vehicle combat, and there's capital ship combat. That's the, you know, that's the difference between like your tanks and your fighter fighters, um, maybe doing a car chase down the middle of the road, you know, that kind of stuff. That would be more small vehicle combat, but then you have your quote-unquote capital ship combat, and that's your battleships, your star destroyers. Your mm-hmm. really large, probably silhouette six and up. You know what I mean? I think mm-hmm. something like that, right? Where they'll have multiple guns. Your three masted ships. You know, if you're playing in like a pirate setting, you know that would be more of a capital ship combat there because they would have the you know the long nines, the twenty, the twenty pounders, you know, or the you know the twenty you know guns on each side and whatever. So. so- I need to roll initiative for 20 separate guns on one side of a ship? No, man. Just one. Just, Just one for, for one that ship. zone. Just for that zone. Exactly. Yes. And and that is uh, a good uh, handy trick there. Uh, on a capital ship, you only roll initiative slots, enough of them, for every zone, and maybe one extra one for the, um, the captain, bridge crew, and maybe one for the engineering crews uh, on a really large ship because they're right. going to be doing repairs and things like that. Anyone who has something that affects combat that can act. Um, yep. if, if, there are, if, if your players are on a large ship mm-hmm. and they are taking part of a large-scale combat, they're going to take up player slots. But you're going to need a couple extra for crew on the ship. Yeah. And you know what? I would take – I would have um – like say if our if my party was on a um was on a sea galleon and i have a player that his character or her character is skilled in gunnery all right take over the you know starboard side guns and they they will go when you go you know on your initiative mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. and do the and and do it do it that way um maybe i have a shipwright um character who is basically trying to keep you know the you know the ship afloat, um, <laughs> you know fixing the sails, those kinds of things. That would <laughs> plugging again, leaks. Yeah, <laughs> he has a whole crew of men leaks. below deck just they're plugging leaks with uh, pitch and and <laughs> and extra wood. That's right, controlling the ballasts and all that stuff. You know, <laughs> um, yeah, yep, yeah. yeah, that's a good good point there, dude. Okay, so and then there's a little thing here that I really love doing, and that is mixed personal and vehicle scale combats because they're run similarly you can do both together Mm -hmm. and 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 intermingle it 
at the same time, initiative slots can be taken by people on the uh, on foot versus small vehicles that are moving in the area, motorcycles, horses, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, characters can be thrown from their vehicles in mid-battle. Um, this is your high-speed horse and carriage fight. This yep. is your, you know... In the you, Firefly you got, universe. You've got no. two guys <laughs> standing on top of a carriage uh, and it's going down the road. And you've got uh, multiple people on horseback and two guys mm-hmm. going head to head fists fighting fist fighting on the top of a carriage yep this is where those cinematic scenes come from in mixed combat yep all right so again we talked about what you have as far as actions maneuvers and incidentals mm-hmm. and you know we could go over them some of them require a vehicle have a certain silhouette size some of them require a vehicle have uh, be going a certain speed Yes. Or less than a certain speed. Yeah, so each one of these, like the maneuvers and in the actions, they have... I'm looking at this um, Brace for Impact, for instance. Okay. On page 227. There's mm-hmm. a pilot only. Yes, only the pilot can do this. Any silhouette, so it gives you a silhouette of the, sh- of the ship or vehicle that you are in, and you can do that at any speed. So you want to keep track of your speed... And yes, taking that accelerate and decelerate maneuvers matters. So you'll want to have, I don't know, a six-sided die. We'll just, we'll do it for you. You know. Yeah, and that was one thing I was speed. gonna. That was one thing I was gonna mention. If you're using miniatures uh, for your your combat, uh, or if you're not using miniatures, just take out a die and set it out a D10, a D6, whatever, to keep track of the speed of your vehicles. It will make things go much smoother for you yeah yeah and then so. underneath so then after that they just give a description of what does this maneuver do and this well this brace for impact one is once per round the pilot can use the maneuver to adjust position to minimize incoming damage so um yeah so it's pretty pretty cool yeah and then at the top of page 227, there is uh, a great sidebar for navigation hazards um, oh, that yeah. affect that affect your actions mm-hmm. and such. And you, um, you definitely want to use this, especially if, and we I can't say it enough, if you're GMing or DMing. Yes, I prefer to DM. No, <laughs> um, you um you want to throw these setback dice out there for your players because their characters have talents that'll mitigate those and it makes it makes them feel like they've invested make made a good investment to do that kind of stuff mm-hmm. so yep yeah they'll have they uh, whenever t- players have those talents always give them reasons to remove oh, yeah. or set back dice to remove it makes them makes them feel like they they did something with their xp that's right um <laughs> so uh yeah, we've got uh, actions that include, uh, you know, let's just, I mean, I'm going to list off briefly the maneuvers. You've got accelerate mm-hmm. and decelerate. You've got brace for impact. You've got evade. You've got reposition. Those are your standard maneuvers. And like Chris said earlier, you can you can, you can can add more as a GM if you think they uh, there are other things they could be doing mm-hmm. um, that are maneuvers. Uh, actions, you've got uh, dangerous driving, <laughs> which is the only way to drive, in, in my opinion. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Any silhouette. As long as you're going, as long as you're moving, speed one plus. <laughs> uh, blanket barrage, uh, concentrated barrage, and uh, damage control. Yeah, the blanket barrage and concentrated barrage, those are your attacks when your gunners are using multiple like sets of weapons like we were talking about, like the full broadside of, you know, cannons going off. <sighs> You know, mm-hmm. that's it. And you all can read uh, read up on these um, specifically what they do, and um, it's pretty pretty cool how they've done this. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then there's uh, gain the advantage and additional mm-hmm. vehicle actions. Now, when it says additional vehicle actions, there is a chart table three two dash seventeen additional vehicle actions, mm-hmm. and it breaks a whole bunch of them down. Page two twenty nine. Um, Page two, yeah, two twenty nine, and it it tells you what skill is appropriate, what the difficulty 
should be. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a suggestion. If you as a GM feel that it should be more or yeah. less, I don't know why you'd make it less, honestly. But <laughs> Exactly. Why would you? <laughs> <laughs> if you feel like it should be more than that or less, yeah, feel free to raise it lower. Mm-hmm. I mean, one, uh, ex- one, on example, the- one example is jamming. You know, mm-hmm. the third one in the list here. Basically, the crew member uses a vehicle system to jam communications between the enemy vehicles. Um, and then you can, um, ba- so basically they can't communicate with each other. Another mm-hmm. one is, uh, what's the other one? Uh, fire now discipline. The- fire discipline is pretty cool. You can have, um, you could direct your comrades to fire a weapon um, even better and give them boost dice for that stuff. Making leadership mm-hmm. checks and such. So, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Uh, and jamming, I would definitely raise the difficulty if you're using actual jam. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but if it's Smuckers. <laughs> if it's mean, Raspberry, then it's only Lone Star. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> All right. And then uh, performing combat checks with vehicle weapons is the last action that you can, is listed here. <laughs> yep. Um, and, you know, that's that's anybody that has a vehicle weapon at their disposal. And you can, you know, if you're like, I always go back to Star Wars, for example. But if you have a um, co-pilot and a pilot and you have multiple system weapon systems, split them up. One of you use yeah. the concussion missile launchers. One use the forward-mounted laser. And, and maybe one of the players, another player is up in the top turret. And, you know, spread that stuff out. Get yep. as many shots as you can as a crew. Yep, and you know, and just remember, and they list you know some some rules here with it that each weapon can only be fired once per round. Mm-hmm. Um, it must be within the fire and arc of the weapon, or what we had mentioned earlier. You can, you know, maybe add setback dice if they're right on the edge of the of the um, of the firing arc or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, most of them do the planetary scale, which is ten times, you know, a personal scale weapon. And then, um, you know, armor reduces damage, you know, yep. like soak. Excellent. So, and then the critical hit, the critical hit table is on actually that same page, 230. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a smaller, a little smaller table, but yep. the 154 plus <laughs> vaporized, <laughs> the vehicle <laughs> is completely destroyed, consuming a yeah. large, in a large dramatic fireball. Nothing survives. And of course, yep. you know, and just like in personal scale combat, if you are triggering more than one critical hit when you fire your weapon, you um you you'll take each additional crit and add and just make one critical hit roll and just add ten percent to that percentile roll after that. Right. You know, so, so if you've activated, basically, if you're saying what you're saying here is, if I had four advantage and my vehicle weapon takes two advantage to activate a critical hit, I'm going to roll one and add plus ten to it. Correct. Yep. So I'll yeah. activate it twice, adding the ten percent for each additional one. So it's effectively just one bigger critical hit if you decide to do that way. Which okay. sometimes will make the oh, you could get that vaporize result. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, of course we have a couple example for uh, example vehicles listed here. Uh, these are mm-hmm. these are just the simple ones, um, and you know space fighter or aerospace superiority fighter four door vehicle. Oh, there's my three masted um, frigate. Yeah, kick ass, and, dude. And that's pretty much all the Genesis Core book gives us. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's look at this frigate real quick. Okay. So we have a, so a three-masted frigate. Everybody kind of has an idea. We're talking if anybody has been alive in the last, had a heartbeat in the last 10 years, and you've seen the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, <laughs> any of those ships could probably suffice. It's basically mm-hmm. the size we're talking about. And that's a Silhouette 5. They have a maximum speed of five, of three. Except for, of course, the uh, Black Pearl, which would probably have a max speed of four. A handling mm-hmm. of three, of minus three, mind you. Yeah. No defense, of course, because it's made out of wood. Um, <laughs> we have, And we have armor of three. Now, Old Ironsides, the, USS, the U.S. Constitution, would probably have a defense of one or two. Um, the hull threshold. Now, these are pretty, this is pretty big. Sixty. And then strain threshold is 45. And then, you know, then each one of these, they go into, like, whatever, what the control skill is. And just looking at this as opposed to the fighter, well, 
for a frigate, it's operating. Mm-hmm. And then for the fighter, it's piloting, which, duh. And then there's like a, and it gives you like a compliment. You know, there's 225 crew on this ship where there's one pilot, one co pilot in a aerospace superior fighter with probably, you know, an F 18A. Um, passenger capacity of 60, price and rarity, consumables, encumbrance. And then we have weapons. So there are, so on this ship, there are 15 starboard and 15 port 24 pounder cannons. Now, are you going to make 15 rolls, Tony? No. Nope. You're going to do a blanket barrage or mm-hmm. the other barrage on it. And the, the, the rules up there will let you know how you do that. And then there's four starboard and four um, port nine pounder cannons. And then there's the two forward long nines, which can fire at long range. Nine mm. pound, nine pound cannons and such. So, um, from those, when you're doing those uh, long chases, yes, yep. over many hours. Yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, so that's like an example, and you know, those are that's you know that's a vehicle profile for you. And those mm-hmm. are the kinds of things if you want to create your own vehicles. Those are the things that you'll want to have, and you can even create. There are character sheets for those, although I didn't see them on the resource page. But I know in the Star Wars system they had um, they had uh, character sh- quote unquote character sheets for vehicles, right? And if you just go if you're at the FFG forums, if you go to the Star Wars section in their uh, forums, mm-hmm. they also have a um, dedicated resource um, pinned to the very beginning for the uh, for their resource list, and in there you'll find a vehicle sheet that you can use mm-hmm. for Genesis. Uh, and it'll be pretty much everything you need. I don't think mm-hmm. they've really changed much at all. And nope. you know, I'll tell you one thing that to, to talk about. I've, I've how, have you played in many um, pirate um, campaigns or anything? Two like swashbuckling. Yeah, and you know, I'll tell you that vehicle <clears throat> that they get really becomes a like a fifth or sixth party member. However mm-hmm. big the party is, you know what I mean. And even in Star Wars too, you know the you know your beginning ship is a whole nother party member so take advantage yep, of this it, it'll add to your game most definitely yep gms make sure that uh, i mean if you if you have a group that has a a a, uh, a party ship or uh whether it be a three-masted frigate or whether it be a uh smuggling vessel in a firefly type game <laughs> give it life give it mm-hmm. its own i mean these are guidelines um as far as its individual hull threshold maybe yours is a little more for their sh- for the for the uh, ship, for the um, yep. for the party, maybe it's a little less. Uh, maybe their particular one has a handling of uh, minus two instead of minus three, mm-hmm. just like uh, the Black Pearl had a speed of four. Yeah. As it was, you know, uh, feel free to modify the vehicle as a GM. Yep. And there are really good guidelines given in Star Wars, um, and I, I, I'm sure we'll get them in other Genesis materials later. Yep. But there is in the latest uh, Age of Rebellion book, fully operational. Uh, there is vehicle creation guidelines. Yep. These are bread and butter for spacecraft, but they also cover ground vehicles. Yes. They also cover, you know, uh, small. Sc- I mean, a, if you want to build a tank, or if you want to build a, um, a a fighter. A, a, a space or a, excuse me um, an air to air fighter yep. um, those rules can be applied to just about any era in Genesis yeah if you have steampunk dirigibles um, mm-hmm. a, if you're you're using you know faster than light travel that you know uses um, ludicrous speed <laughs> that's right <laughs> whatever it may be uh, those vehicle creation rules in that book, and <laughs> that is probably one of the, If you're going to go out and buy any Star Wars book and just use it for Genesis, I recommend any of the ones that have the item creation rules in them. Right. That would be the fully operational in the Age of Rebellion line, which has vehicles, um, and special modifications in um, the Edge of the Empire line, which has uh, weapons. Androids. And and droid creation and then in the 
Force and Destiny line, it is uh, Keeping the Peace the is the one book. that has yes that has the armor creation rules. Yep. Those are all beautiful the way they're done, and also mm-hmm. there's the there's the item creation rules that came in a, um, in Realms of Terranoth. Yeah, and if you need any vehicles, I'm just I'm out on the um, out on the Genesis forums right now looking at that master resource list that uh, Sky Jedi sent in. Ha ha ha! Plug it again. There is a link to a thread called Vehicles. Nice and holy buckets, man! We have a sports car, we have a muscle car, we have an Aston Martin. Austin Martin, Aston Martin, whatever. Aston Martin. Aston Mar- Aston Martin. There's a brig, <laughs> which looks like, uh, yep, like a brigantine. Then there's nice. this nice futuristic spinner air car thing, which you could see at like an auto show or whatever. It's pretty sweet. American spy car. Oh, yeah, a picture of Archer and his spy mm-hmm. car. Formula nice. One race car. And it just goes on and on and on and on and on. And um, people, when they post to this, they will let you know whether you're right or not. <laughs> and keep doing that, too. You know, and, yep. you know, just, okay, here we go. American spy car, a weapon, oil slick emitter, at plus two setback dice, all drive checks for pursuing vehicles. Boom. Simple. Mm-hmm. You know, spy hunter, yep. dude. <laughs> That's awesome. Keep it simple, dude. <laughs> That's awesome stuff. Yep. Yep. Well so done out there. That's that's my recommendations for building your own vehicles. Take what's mm-hmm. existing, tweak it. Don't try to rewrite the the. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Correct. Um, just take what's available to you and tweak it a little bit. Yeah, man. All right. Absolutely. All so right. you're ready to move on to our next section. I am. All right, so welcome to Setting the Tone. Uh, normally, Chris and I talk about vehicles in our settings that we are creating. Um, well, I would, have, I would have pirate ships and slaver ships in Primeval Thule, but we already, we already t- I already talked about pirates so much already. Ah, and, and, in, and in Hellgate, which I've kind of tabled for now because I have this other project <laughs> that... Uh, um, is top secret. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that I've been writing. Um, it's not Fight Club, dude. I could talk about it a little bit. <laughs> True, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I've I've kind of tabled my uh, Hellgate uh, for a while, and I don't plan on having vehicle combat in that mm-hmm. because uh, it's a post-apocalyptic setting where uh, there aren't any vehicles except for damaged and d- deceased ones. Cool. So. Only to throw them, right? Yeah, the exceptional, <laughs> the occasional one that might be working, in which case uh, it's not going to be involved in uh, vehicle-to-vehicle combat. It's going to be more on a personal scale anyway. So Nice. So what are you talking about in setting the tone, then? What could we talk about? Well, there's this... Uh, well, we talked a lot about it tonight, the Fantasy Flight Forums. There is a group of people over there that are trying to put together something that is near to my heart. I played it for years. Um, I don't know. How about you, Chris? Did you play? I played it very little. Very okay. little. And that is Battletech. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have uh, really started brainstorming over there on the forums yep. about the Battletech system and how to... Mimic mech combat in Genesis. Yeah, yeah, and um, Gilbert started this post, this thread, and it's in the um, the resources list that uh, Sky Jedi has over there um, under settings, and it'll just take you to these posts here um, where you know they start listing out, you know, talking about the missiles in the game, you know, SRMs, LRMs, you know, um, the different short range missiles, long range missiles. There Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> translating. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's a MML or MRM? Um, myo mole- myo molecular assault. Lasers? One's a muscle fiber. The MML is muscle fiber. It makes your uh, the he- the more heated your mech gets, the stronger it gets nice. for physical combat. And um, and that's one of the things that that when I've played bat- battle tech, it's it was all about. The areas on your mech, 
missiles, your weapons, and mm. mitigating heat and your maneuverability, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. And you can definitely, and on page three here, um, just 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 reading this forum, just reading this GM Specter basically lays it out that you know the different levels of your missiles. Four LRM long-range missiles, three um, short-range missiles. You can use the linked quality, the linked quality mm-hmm. on these missiles, where you can, and by linked I mean, um, when you roll to hit, um, you will um, when you make your combat roll. Whenever you get one or two advantage, I believe you can, you can um, uh, trigger the linked quality, which does another set of damage. For another set of missiles. So if you have like linked three, you could trigger that up to three times for that missile battery, if you will. Mm-hmm. And you can link heat to it, which what's heat? That's your system strain. So mm-hmm. you can you can you can give you can give um and they started going into this a little bit in this in this um in this uh th- this thread, these threads, um is uh each Saw each um, area like your head, your what is it torso, your upper torso? No, what is it? Your head, head, left arm, right arm, core, right leg, left leg. You could give wounds and your heat threshold or whatever. Yes, they could have their own. They could have their own wound thresholds. Mm -hmm. They can also have their own critical hit locations. Oh Um, yeah, and it it all. I mean, if you really want to get into playing it like BattleTech. If you, I mean, BattleTech, okay, you you rolled to rolled to see, you know, first of all, you decided how many weapons you're going to fire, mm-hmm. and then you fired them, and you immediately accumulated all the heat for them, for firing all those weapons. So, um, each weapon that you'd create on a battle mech would provide a certain number of system strain to the mm-hmm. uh, to the vehicle, and then you have a certain number of heat sinks. That uh, is basically your your soak for heat. Yeah, so that's a good way of looking at it, most definitely. Um, yeah, so say you have um, all if you fired all your weapons at once, it creates thirteen heat for your vehicle. Well, your vehicle only has a twenty two system strain. Um, well, and you in, have enough heat sinks to maybe soak eight. Eight of that, so you're right. going to start taking system strain every time you fire off all your weapons, mm-hmm. or you can cycle through your weapons where you're going to do eight each turn worth of heat. Well, that's where really cool weapons like the flamer uh, gets in, and it creates heat on a vehicle. Um, <laughs> Sweet. And um, so, yeah, they get into. I mean, those, those guys over there, they're really working on making that work oh, yeah. and and i just wanted to like for our setting the tone bring that up and if you want if you're a listener and you want to contribute go over there to that forum yeah. page give them your input i mean if you're a big battle tech fan i was for a long time i still own all the stuff yeah. for and it was one my uh, my dad who's not a gamer um he's not a role-playing gamer he was an old miniature war gamer there you uh, go with the old World War II miniatures. Um, and he had a table in, in our garage that he built for with terrain and everything for doing miniature uh, World War II style miniature combat with his you know friends. Very cool. And him and I got into Battletech. And, oh, awesome. Uh, and uh, so, yes, for many a year, I played uh, BattleTech with my dad and with my friends. And uh, well, yeah, it's, it's where our it's where our role playing hobby comes from. Are those war games? You know, yes. Guy yes, Gax and Arneson started creating their own rules, and they wanted to say, "Hey, what if this, what if this general here um, got better and better? And you know, maybe this is a fantasy setting, and maybe there's a mage, and you know, let's go to this castle and start, you know." Did you ever Delving. read those neat books by J.R.R. Tolkien? Um, <laughs> what if one of them was a dwarf? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. So um, it doesn't look like there was. So it's been a few weeks since somebody's posted over there, but I'll have the link in the show notes. And of course, you can go over to that resources page that we've mentioned as well to look All at. Right. So. 
Well, that's the meat of our show. That is the main, sorry, the the main course of our little meal here. Right. <laughs> the, we, hope, uh, we hope we have um, fired up the grill and been <laughs> in your grill enough <laughs> with this, with the vehicles. If you have any questions about vehicle combat and vehicles, uh, feel free to shoot them our way. Exactly. All, All right. right. So now on to our favorite, show, favorite section, man. You know what it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll, Advantageous we'll, threats. Oh, yeah. Okay, welcome to Advantageous Threats. This is where Chris and I like to uh, play around with the system, play with some dice, roll something up. <laughs> oh yeah. So, uh, mine for you this week, Chris. Uh, my character, <laughs> by you, Bobby Boucher. Do the accent, Bobby Boucher. <laughs> Bobby Boucher. No, I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Bobby is a uh, swamp boat smuggler in a 1970s crime setting. Dude, I like it already. Um, I have uh, I have been trying to lose a police helicopter chasing me for several rounds. My boat is at four of six strain threshold. I have a critical hit that makes me take strain every time I perform a high-speed maneuver. That is a maneuver at above speed two. Ooh. Um, uh, Up ahead is a thick grove of swamp trees, and I want to make a mad dash for the trees to hide my boat long enough to effect repairs and move on. Well, that's pretty cool. I actually yeah. like that. All right, so Bayou Bobby Boucher has <laughs> an agility of three. Okay. And he has a driving or uh, operation or whatever we want to use for uh, boat boating. piloting. We could call it um, boating in this setting, right? <laughs> right, maybe, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, so he has uh, two ranks in that. Okay. And he has... Uh, so he has right now a positive dice pool of one, uh, one green, two yellow. Two yellow. All right. All right. So what is my difficulty here? Well, um, I'm going to think this is – you're going into a thick grove of swamp trees. Mm-hmm. Very thick. So I'm going to say it's going to be a hard check. Okay. So I'm three thinking, purple. I'm thinking hard check. Or you know what? Let's make it. Let's make it an average check, but automatically upgraded. Okay. Because of that, you're not 100 percent sure what is there underneath the the water there because you're going into a big thick grove of the trees. Mm-hmm. Um, we can say that it. Let's say that it's. Let's add a little bit of environmental effects here. Let's say that it's raining a little bit. Add a add a add a setback die to that because you are. Um, you know, you're in the swamp in the rain. Okay. And because this is a tricked out smuggler swamp boat, I have a handling of one plus one. Nice. Okay. So I've got a boost die. Nice. Are you a and special swamp boat smuggler pilot? Do you have any special talents? Um. Yeah, but they're mainly for you know remaining unhidden. They're remaining hidden, not for not for uh, once I've been. Caught. You know, I'm thinking that if it is raining, there might be a little bit of fog, too. Okay. So I'm going to give you a boost eye for that. Oh, for them to maybe, to. Yeah, like you're going to hit like maybe a patch of fog or something like that. And, um, All right. But I am going at top speed here, <laughs> and I'm trying to make a, uh, a, a difficulty to maneuver at uh, high speed. Where did you find so the difficulty? I, uh, you that? gave it to me. Oh, that's right. I did. I did give it. <laughs> <laughs> and a fairly dangerous one, too. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, uh, I mean, given my speed, I, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you want to spend a story point to upgrade it. Um, well, you know, it's not because of your speed that I'm going to upgrade a story point. Um, there is a um, there's a big crocodile named um, Steely Dan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the groves here. <laughs> All right. For it. <laughs> I'm going to roll this beast up. All right. 
right, first of all, Steely Dan has no effect. That is one blank die. Steely oh. Dan is taking a big old crock nap. Bummer. All right. Uh, so I had a the uh, rain caused my only failure. Okay. Uh, but I had two successes. Cool. So I have a net of one success. Mm-hmm. And the other automatic upgrade because of that you gave me because of the difficulty mm-hmm. would be canceled by my proficiency, cool. leaving me with four advantage. So one success, four advantage. Well so done, sir. For my four advantage, I'm going to have the helicopter get too close to the trees, wow. and it is going to have a collision. It is going to take a critical hit. I think um, I'm thinking for four for um, advantage that is well worth it. I do believe. Why don't you Why don't you roll your um, Why don't you roll that hundred cider for me and okay. let's say a helicopter has zero defense because it's okay. controlled chaos and it is going to be a you know we'll say that it's going to be a direct crit. Okay. And it's going pretty fast, so we're going to add. Where, where was that at? Crap. So oh. add some to it. <laughs> oh, I know where I know where it was. It was in that one that I said before. <laughs> uh, where'd you do with it? I, I, I I'm almost there. Uh, uh, ooh, e, oh, there it is. Okay, it's going. Yep, add twenty percent to it because I am on page two twenty one for the vehicle speeds and structured encounters. It was going at least speed four. Three or I four. gotcha. You follow? So add twenty yep. percent to this. Okay. So I rolled forty seven plus twenty percent, sixty seven. Sixty seven. Oh, propulsion damaged. Vehicle's propulsion is compromised. Well, um we're gonna say that tail rotor clips mm-hmm. a tree and a <laughs> <laughs> All right. it is going to spin on down. And nice. yeah, but because you took strain doing a high mm. speed maneuver. Mm-hmm. Um, your boat kind of goes, bah, 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 bah. but you are such a nice swamp boat smuggling aficionado. You kind of cruise into that thicket of swamp trees and you are hidden from these guys. Nice. Well done, Maybe sir. Maybe I can get out my wrenches and fix my vehicle now. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my character named Patches McGee, <laughs> he is a hotshot pilot. He's piloting a light mining freighter out in an asteroid belt somewhere. Okay. He's got a cargo full of precious ore and a crew of miners he needs to get back to base safely. However, there are space pirates about. But worse than that, they're goblin space pirates. Nice. <laughs> Just because. <laughs> so he picks up one of their vehicles on his long-range scanners and decides basically kind of the same thing that you're doing. Um... He wants to pilot through a huge space of huge pile of sta- space derbis debris. <laughs> a derbis <laughs> to find some cover. <laughs> nice. So, um, with a name like Patches McGee, because he's got patches for all the wars and stuff he's been in, he's got. Um, he's gonna. Um, we're gonna say he has an an agility of two and a piloting of two. Um, he is he is basically. Pushing this thing at three speed, probably. Um, okay. Trying to do a um, what would be the maneuver? He's definitely wanting to do the um, dangerous driving, of course. Narrowly, narrowly placed obstacles. Um, makes a piling check with a difficulty equal to the silhouette of the vehicle. Ooh, this is going to be tough because this is probably going to be at least a silhouette four. So a light, a light. Is it a? Are the light um, ships probably a four or a five? A light freighter would be silhouette four, probably. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be a. All right, so my difficulty is equal to the silhouette. Mm-hmm. So I've got. So that's going to be four there. But so, yes. you have all this space debris around. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> and you said you're a mining freighter, right? Uh, yeah. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and give you two boost dice. 
to boost because you, setback. Two boost dice because oh. of the because uh, you're trying to hide here. Right. Well, I'm going to take and, a couple of setback die because I'm pretty sure the handling on this thing is probably a minus two. Yep. Maybe minus, was, at least at least a minus one. Probably I was a get minus there two. next. Okay. First, gotcha. I wanted to get your hopes up with your positive dice. All right. <laughs> um, so I, I was giving you two. Okay. Uh, one for the amount of debris, and two for the amount of. Oh, or that is in the debris, the amount of, it, it is throwing off the uh, the amount of uh, or throwing off their sensors. Ah, so that nice. was what the second one came from. Cool, cool. Um, and then I was going to say you had a minus two handling on your freighter because you didn't pick. So I was going to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and <Feel> uh, free. <laughs> and also because they're goblin space pirates, um, yeah. they aren't very. Like their ship isn't really high quality, so I did give you another boost die for their crappy sensors. <laughs> Wait, so is that three boost dice total or two? Yes, yes. three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome, awesome sauce. Um, well, now, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna I would like to spend a story point to upgrade this. Go chat. ahead, go and right the ahead. reason the story the story behind this is, well, you know, I've got a couple cousins on board. And, um, you know, who are miners, and I kind of want to show off a little bit. Are they miners as in, like, they wear hats and use picks, or are yes. they miners as in they can't drink? Not that they're under 18, no. <laughs> no <okay. laughs> they're, they got, well, they're space miners, so maybe they have laser picks. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. And I'm pretty sure you want to upgrade. I was going to, because of, again, the amount of debris, you might hit something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Ooh, this is a nice big pool. Big hands for a big pool. (laughs) Some people are afraid of big pools of dice with big hands. (laughs) You know it. (laughs) Okay, so we have three yellow, a green, three blue, uh, a red, three purple, two black. Yeah. All All right, everybody, here we go. <laughs> All right. One of the um, blue has came up blank, so we're gonna say, um, what do you call it? Those space goblins have their stuff tweaked out. Okay. The two so setback their bad sensors didn't didn't affect it. Right. The the the, the, the two setback die actually um, actually uh, came up blank too. So the handling on this ship. Is just incredible. I was mm-hmm. able. I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm used to it. Okay. Um, and we have three, uh, three disadvantage on the other f- dice, and then those are called threat partner. Threat. Sorry. Oh, get it right. Three threat. <laughs> the three. Threat Trying to run a podcast here, buddy. Are canceled. <laughs> um, and I'm left with one, two, three, four, five successes, Whew. and. Two advantage for this. Yep, and all my advantage. Those successes. So you find what appears to be a like a almost like a conch shell, conch shell shaped asteroid, and you fly up into it and get your freighter kind of floating there inside this dark opening. Shut your lights down, and that goblin ship starts. On by. What do you nice, do? Nice, nice. What do you um, want to do with your advantage? What I want to do with my advantage is, I would like to note this place on my sensors because little do I know, looking right outside of my um, outside of my window as I was looking looking at that goblin ship going by, I have found another vein of precious ore. Oh. I could come back and maybe mine it. Nice. Scout out. So there we go. All right. That could have gone well, so much worse. <laughs> it could have. Could have. So much worse. We need to we need to crank up the difficulties on these rolls so that we can get some freaking despairs. I think so. <laughs> I think so. I think I've been too lenient on you. Yeah, you have. <laughs> you have. All right. Well, shall we end this? Let's end this thing. All right.
right. Um, we are out. And let me do a sh- shout out to Mr. Eric Lamaru and just insert imagination and congratulate them on the uh, release of the Wise Guys demo kit that you guys can find on Drive Through RPG um, as a pay what you want. And what this is is an introduction to a Las Vegas mob setting for an organized crime organized crime toolkit for the Savage Worlds role playing game. And it's called Wise Guys. Um, basically, you play criminals from the 1990s, working for the mob, building an empire in Vegas. Um, there is about, I mean, there's 38 pages in this. You can pay what you want. Um, it's an Italian American mob awesomeness. There's back and background information, organizations, points of interest, and Fugazi, a mob tale. <laughs> so, a beginning adventure. Yeah. A beginning adventure there. And I think we may have played this. He might have um, tested this out at Con and the Cobb with us. Yes, he did. We both play tested that. And it was a lot of fun, man. It was awesome. So congratulations to you guys and everybody. Go check that out because it is yep. it is great. Um, I've, I'll put the link in the in the um, in the show notes, and you can find um, just insert imagination on Facebook and Google Plus. They have their own Google Plus page and Facebook page. So, yep. And Eric is also uh, the Eric, the man who's writing Eric Lamaru, is mm-hmm. also a member of the. Uh, Nerds International Community, which we belong to, um, and that's with the hyphen. So you can find him and us over there. Uh, you can email us at findingthenarrativepodcast at gmail.com, and you can get a hold of us at Finding the Narrative on Facebook. And Finding the Narrative Podcast is listenable on Podbean, iTunes, and you can listen to us, audio, watch us, whatever you want to do on YouTube. Absolutely. So, well, that's it, man. That's it. All right. Well, this is Tony saying, keep rolling them bones. And this is Chris saying, remember the rule of cool and just have fun. Good night, everybody. Good night. Finding a Narrative podcast is not affiliated with or endorsed by any companies mentioned on the show. Any of the products mentioned on our show or appear on our website are the property and copyright of their respected owners. All items are used under fair use and educational and review purposes. All other items are the intellectual property of Finding a Narrative podcast. Copyright 2018. All rights reserved.